everyone, and uh, welcome to Learning from the Pros with Practical Machinists. Uh, I'm Matt Schmelzer here at Northeast Wisconsin Technical College in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Uh, today we're going to talk tail stocks, uh, particularly tail stocks on this manual lathe. Uh, some of the uh, uh, purposes of the tail stock are uh, one for some of our hole making tools uh, where we could uh, mount drills, reamers. Uh, Jacobs chucks with various types of uh, hole making tools, taps, uh, that kind of stuff uh, in the quill of the tail stock. Uh, and also we can get into uh, utilizing uh, centers, devices like this. That allows us to support either long or heavy parts where we get beyond our uh, two times diameter stick out out of our primary work holding device, this chuck over here. Um, so. Just kind of looking at the uh, the tail stock here, we got our quill, we got our quill lock, and then our quill feed handle. Now, uh, there are some uh, situations, some components where we're possibly using uh, centers like this to support a long part, and possibly moving this tail stock off center location from the spindle. Perhaps if we're turning a taper on a shaft uh, on a specific part like that. So with that in mind, uh, once this center is moved off location, uh, we have to go through a procedure to realign the center of our tail stock with the center of our spindle nose. Uh, so today I'm going to go over a quick procedure on using a test bar to uh, align our tail stock to the center of our spindle. So on the workbench here I have uh, some of the tools that we're going to be using for aligning our tail stock. Um, I have a couple of test bars here. Now a test bar is a heat treated and precision ground uh, cylindrical bar, of course with centers on each end. This allows us to uh, support one end by the spindle nose, one end by the tail stock, and this will give us a nice straight um, device to indicate to align our tail stock. Now they do come in different lengths. Uh, this one here is a rather large uh, 18 inch uh, test bar all the way down to a small six inch test bar. Now a lot of this, uh, depending on which one we use, uh, depends on how long of a work piece that we're going to be uh, supporting with our tail stock. Of course, the longer the work piece, the longer the test bar we're gonna use. This is gonna give us a little more accuracy over a longer distance versus the shorter one. So we have our two test bars. Uh, I'll be using the longer one today. Uh, and then I have a couple of dead centers. Uh, I always like to use dead centers uh, because it, they do not have the bearing mechanism. Uh, that's gonna eliminate any kind of chance of movement uh, that we would have with a live center. So I'll be using a larger dead center by the spindle nose, a uh, smaller one back by the tail stock. Of course, I have a wrench that's gonna allow me to do the adjustment on the tail stock. And then just a one inch travel uh, indicator that I'll be using uh, along the test bar. So let's go ahead and get set up on the machine. So I'm over here at our LeBlond engine lathe. Uh, one thing already, I have the chuck removed. Uh, we had a three jaw chuck on here. So I have that removed. That's gonna give me access to the spindle nose of the machine. Uh, so I'm gonna use my large dead center. And uh, one thing I always like to do is make sure I don't have any chips or burrs. I'm gonna check the quality of that. Make sure that these are in good condition. I always like to make sure that there are no chips or grease, any kind of debris in the spindle nose itself. So I'm just taking just a nice clean rag, making sure I don't have any debris inside there because they have a tendency to uh, move through that spindle nose. So basically I'm going to take my dead center, get it started and seat it in tight. Now I can go ahead back to the tail stock. Um, again, I do have any kind of work holding or uh, tool holding device removed. Um, so I'll make sure that this end is nice and clean, free of any kind of debris or nicks. I have my dead center here for this end of the machine. Same thing, I'll get it started, slide it in and seat it tight. Now that we have our centers in, we're ready to go to our test bar. Of course, I'm going to uh, make sure that the centers of my test bar are nice and clean and not damaged or any kind of grease or debris. Uh, and then I'll just go ahead and simply slide this into position, move my quill back, make sure I tighten up my tail stock so it doesn't move around on me. And then I'm just gonna bring a little bit of pressure 
to support my test bar. So now I have this thing locked in between centers. I'll go ahead and lock my quill into position. So now we're going to move over to the tail stock of the machine here. Uh, just kind of how to adjust this and some of the components. In the very center of the tail stock, I have a stud that goes all the way through the device to a clamp beneath. Uh, on the front and back, again, we have these adjuster screws, and that's going to allow me to push or pull this tail stock in either direction. And of course, I got my wrench uh, to fit those two bolts. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here. I'll get my indicator set up. And I want to make sure that I zero off of this end because this end does not move. <clears throat> so I'll just get my uh, indicator into position and I'll just preload it four to five revolutions. And then I can move the dial to zero this out. So now I'm zeroed out on my spindle side. I'll go ahead and move over to the tailstock end. I can see the indicator is falling off. That means the test bar is moving away from me. So now I'm at 20 thousandths towards the back of the machine. So now that's telling me I got to bring it towards me that amount. So I'll come over to my adjuster screws. And I'm just going to loosen this one just a little bit. And I'll go ahead and tighten the back side just a little bit at a time so I can see as I tighten the back side the indicator is starting to move clockwise direction and I'll stop at the halfway mark and I'll look for my progress so I'm going to move back towards the spindle side of the test bar and it looks like it's bringing us right back to our zero, maybe a little bit past. So now I'll move back towards the tailstock end. And again, I can see the indicator is falling off, meaning the test bar is moving away from me. So I'll move to that position and I'll move it a little bit back towards me. Again, tightening the back side of the tailstock adjuster, loosening the front side. And just a little bit at a time from one adjuster screw to the other. I want to make sure that both of the adjuster screws are snug when this is at zero. So there, it bumped just a little bit. I'm going to go back towards my spindle side and see where my zero point is. So I'm just slightly off of about a thousandths. Zero it back out, and I'm just going to move back towards my tailstock side. And it's about one thousandths of an inch back yet, so I'll just see if I can adjust this back screw just a little bit more. right there and then I'll just verify it back towards the spindle and I'm seeing very little movement on my indicator at all so that's over 18 inches of this test bar I'm pretty much zero on both sides my adjuster screws are both snug where they're not loose that won't allow the tailstock to move around at all and there we have our tailstock indicated to the center line of our spindle. Now anytime we're supporting a part, a long part like this, taking cuts, that's going to allow for a nice straight cut. Of course, as we're machining a part of longer lengths supported by the tailstock, we may need to make some minor adjustments uh, from there, but this is going to get us very close. Uh, the other aspect, if we do any hole making operations using the tailstock quill, drilling holes, spot drilling, counter boring, any of those operations, our tool is going to be placed right on center. So I just want to thank you for joining us, uh, aligning a tailstock here at NWTC. Uh, if you like this video, 
uh, hit the subscribe button below. Um, otherwise, check us out on Facebook and Instagram.